lights. I'll put a one one wagon wheel, one rice rice corner yeah. cross, and one gay in rice corner. Okay. So the poll numbers Ryan has notified National Grid okay. of those poll numbers, and we're at the mercy of National Grid at the moment. Okay. Well, that would still leave money for at least another dozen lights. Um, again, just it, well, it depends on the size of yeah. those. So well, you're you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, well, it's not necessarily. But, but I assume lights. we're going to use this, this, a standard LED light, which is about one hundred twenty-five dollars. Is what I was told. So uh, part of the delay was to make sure no neighbors. We had put up some lights earlier, and we received complaints from the neighbors. So we wanted. Cindy to, told me about that. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we wanted to do was make sure we contacted the neighbors to make yeah. sure that they were fine, and that was part of the delay. But it's now moving as fast as now the national grid will want to move. Okay. Well, again, I guess, and this comes from someone who's older who drives around town. I, I think every major intersection or major road should be marked with a light, so you know where it is. Um, so again, if you want to point me to do it or somebody else? I just think we could use at least another 10 or 12 lights exactly where I don't know. I, I live on Race Corner Road. I could make a couple other suggestions on Race Corner Road. For example, you know where Turley Farm is? There's a light there, but on the, we come to the crest of the hill before what, that. What farm is that? Rice, you, know, you know the old Turley Farm on Race Corner Road? They don't own it now. It's, it's if you come up where Gay Road and Race yeah. Corner Road yeah, forks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You come up. So you come up to a crest of a hill, you come down like this, and you take a turn. At the turn, there's a light, but at the crest of the hill, there's no light. Right. Okay. Do you follow me? So that's another point. Again, if you, you look down a safety. Well, but you see, and this is where I struggle a little bit with that, because it's the part of what helps you understand what you've got for oncoming traffic is that you get better clarity from a longer distance on the fact that you have like headlights coming the other direction if you don't do something like light the crest of a hill that seems kind of counterintuitive to me like what's the benefit it's more for when you come up <clears throat> again that depends which way you're going on the hill again i, I don't know how well you know the road you know the road right well yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I go up and down that road quite a yeah. bit yeah it's, it's coming the it's Coming towards the center of town, going south as opposed to as yeah, going north as opposed to going south, because you need, it, it's it's again it's having line of sight to me. What I'd do is I'd turn this back around to say you had made those su suggestions earlier, and what we mm -hmm. could do is yes, there's that extra money. That was one of the things that Cindy mm -hmm. made sure that the money was there, and there is additional monies. And what I what I would do is let's circle back to Ryan and to to Mike. And just have them get, get their recommendations. Get their recommendation yeah. to say, well, that was my original thought. It's actually, I would, I probably ask the highway chief and the police chief because they're they they drive around town more than I do. Right. So and they might say, you know, down here at Town Farm Road or, or wherever. I'm just, you know. Right. There is yeah. additional monies, and and yeah, I I, I yeah, would reach just out to the two of them. refer to the yeah. highway superintendent and the police chief mm -hmm. to make a, any additional recommendations. Well, and, that would be very fine by my view. Okay. That's where we're going then. We'll do that okay. then. So we're okay, on. so if you would follow up on that, I'd appreciate sure. that. And thanks for the information. One yeah. other thing while I'm here, um, I don't know if you've seen it in the paper, but there is talk of extending the rail line, the MBTA, out yes. towards Springfield. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, yep. aware of that? Yes. Um, were you aware of the talk at one point when, they, when Governor Patrick was talking about it? Actually, there was a lot of talk about putting a stop in Brookfield. Uh, I would urge you to, to reach out to the congressmen and our state legislators. I, I think would make it a very good place to have a stop out of Mill Street. There used to be one years ago. Yeah. There was a tra train station and there was a stop. Right. But I, I think the thing about where it is is the fact that we, when they when they set up stops along rail lines, they forget you need parking. And there's lots of parking on that Mill Street, or, or could be, potentially. Could be. Could be. And you also have a location that could be a good station area too so i would urge you to reach out to those people and find out what's going on and yep. raise I, our hand and say yes we would be interested yeah, especially if you pay the cost the only stop i think after is up in springfield excuse me the other stop after it leaves worcester i think is up in springfield because they have a train station up there so there's nothing in between right originally when again i what i heard when they were talking 
when Governor Patrick was talking about it, they were looking at a stop in Palmer, Palmer. Yep. and there also there was talk about maybe one in this area. In either East Brookfield yeah, or, or West. Brookfield, that's yep. right. Yep. So that's why I'm saying, as opposed to East Brookfield, West Brookfield, we have the better location yeah. because we have the parking in there. Yeah. The yeah. Well, and we're in closer proximity to yeah. Sturbridge, and Sturbridge was right. Lobby. So I, I attended the Palmer meeting. Okay. And uh, made lobbying efforts at that point to okay. suggest to make sure that they stop in Brookfield. Uh, so anyway, I, when I see Lucas again, I'll see where it is. Okay. Again, appreciate appreciate your lobbying. Okay. It's good. Yep. <laughs> Right. Thank you, Jim, for your Thank ideas you. and coming up tonight. Take Thank care. you. Thank okay. you. Okay, the next one is to sign uh, a grant for the Strategic Demolition Fund. Uh, we received uh, $6,000. $6, yep. and, and it was signed from Mar Healy, and um, I would like permission for the chair to sign. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, what this does is this starts us down the path mm -hmm. of removing the final uh, building on the site itself. What didn't uh, or was not accomplished was the removal or the monies to remove the, what was the roller rink. Yeah. And we, as, as late as uh, earlier this afternoon, we received an email from KP Law with respect to the original taking and they, there is an additional form that needs to fill, be filled out and, and uh, uh, provided the registry of deeds so that it's clear that in fact the town owns the roller rink and that we can oh so they did find the information because michelle called me on it i think it was friday no she's got an email that you should have in your your email it's a, like a page and a half oh. of the background so we can turn around and have uh, that's good Kathy uh, reapply for those monies and we'll probably because of the mud season that we're in uh, or maybe not um, we'll be delaying any activity until late fall or early winter as far as the actual the work to be done that's not something that can be done summertime if it's dry enough if it's really dry, yes, and we'll just have to play it by ear. Okay. But the uh, the clan has been very clear that they want to make sure that the ground is hard if we take any action. I know Tom Tom was in today. Yep, I had and, him come in. And he said that um, he if they're going to be moving things, he said he would like to have it in the fall. So. Yes, yep. And again, he had to sign off on behalf of the mm -hmm. uh, Nipmon tribe. Oh, and they didn't give us money for the sign, so we'll work another angle to see if we can get some signage. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes, we did. And the next one is a cemetery deed for uh, Patrick and Joan O'Day, and I'd like a motion so the selectmen can sign it. Motion to sign. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Now we have some special use permits, and um, I will say them all, and you can, <laughs> then I'll pass them on as I'm reading them to you. Yes. Sir. Okay. It's a special use permit for an event, 4-5-2020, on Quaybog Pond, and this is from the Happy Hookers Bass Club. And then 4-12-2020, on Quaybog Pond, from the Happy Hookers Bass Club. And 5-30-2020, on South Pond, from the New England Adventurers. And then 8-15-2020 from Quaybog Pond is the Shootout Series Bass Trip. The motion to sign. Motion to sign. Special Second. permits. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And on the other, I think you were going to take that over, Karen said. Or I can read it, one of us. Oh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't. Uh, with, with respect to the Cable Access Committee and their, their uh, meeting, uh, there was a concern raised as far as uh, cable access. And uh, what we now know is that there is a meeting next week of the Cable Access Board, including in that will be uh, the uh, folks from the software support people. Um, what will also happen is that we will look to uh, that contract to further the contract with Telview as far as the uh, so software support. And then uh, we will be looking to finalize the uh, advertising for uh, a, st a studio coordinator because one of the issues has been uh, the ability to find a suitable resource for a, su a su studio uh, coordinator. So it seems like we're making progress. Okay. So, Madam Chair, when is the TV channel 194 going to be put back on after a year and a half of? Well, they're having it right here, like Mr. Snyder just read. They're yes. having a meeting about it, so we'll, like we'll, 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 we'll know after the meeting. What's the meeting going to say? The people that are coming yeah, the are people. the people that know about the software, so they'll yeah. be here next week. They'll be here next week. And they got to get a contract in place so they can provide the service. And it's an open meeting, and you're, if you want to attend, you're, you can attend. You're welcome. Maybe I should try to get something done around here. Maybe you should. Okay. The next thing on our is um, it's on our correspondence, and we have a letter here from the planning board to uh, Chief Blanchard, and uh, it says, "I'm writing Correct. this." It's not from the planning board. It's from me. Oh, it's from you. What was on the? Okay. Safe. And this is from Sharon Mahoney. She's the chair of the planning board. She said, Dear Chief Blanchard, I'm writing this letter to express my personal thanks as chair of the Brookfield Planning Board for the assistant members of your department providing us in restoring order in the face of the extreme disruption that took place at our meeting on February 6th and February 19th, and for your help in maintaining order at our last meeting on March 4th. In case of the February meetings, your department responded immediately to our calls and your Officers handle each situation in the individual involved with professionalism and calm and help keep a distressing situation from escalating and causing further disruption. Your presence on March 4 also served to preempt any further outbursts from that individual or any others in the large group of abutters and res residents present. I am proud to be a resident of the town with such a responsive and professional group of officers. <coughs> Please convey my thanks to those who respond, especially Officer Murphy, and to your department in general for the fine work you do. Very truly yours, Sharon A. Mahoney, Chairman of the Brookfield Planning Board. Thank you, Sharon. So just so we're, while we're on that topic, it's my understanding that uh, Mr. Tassie has in fact filed an appeal, or is to file an appeal. So mm -hmm. the question that then arises is that in our budgeting, uh, did we consider that I, we had, um, when I went to the advisory board, I did bring that up. Um, they weren't very receptive to it. Um, but going, I sent them another email after that. I just spoke to Larry today. 
haven't heard anything yet. Okay. Well, to... So we're just going to hold. Well, well. First of all, there's there's no appeal yet because there's no finding that's been filed yet. Right. Okay. Um, I, I think one of the inquiries that we had was authorizing the planning board to at least reach out to KP for a consult mm -hmm. on the initial filing. Filing. Yep. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and authorize them to contact KP to do some proactive, you know, discussions around appropriately drafting the initial decision. I'll second that. Yeah. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, that was so, where I was going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no. Yeah. Because I mean, more. that's that's it's a much it, it may or may not be a much bigger thing, but the first step in the whole process is that we need to get the yeah. decision from the meeting last week appropriately filed. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Fine. All right. Next one on the agenda is Mass Dot. It's um, Chapter ninety funds. We're going to be getting Chapter ninety funds for twenty twenty in the amount of one hundred sixty seven thousand. $899. Fantastic. Yes, that's good. And the next one here on March 31st, this is from Chata. March 31st, 2020, Spectrum My Plan Latino monthly pricing will increase from $49.99 to $54.99. And if anybody has any questions, so they can get hold of John Maha at 774-243-9735. And that's it. Anybody have anything else? I have one. Okay. Um, I got contacted, and I think I think we might have all gotten a message, but I don't know if it went to Karen. So I apologize for not getting it on the agenda. Um, but in trying to set up the negotiations with the police for their contract, mm -hmm. um, Sergeant Parasol has a request in to become a one-person um, yeah, union. I saw that. Yeah. So um, I'd like to make a motion that we. Um, accept that change in structure over in their in their union structure but we would need to send a formal notification to the union that we're accepting his proposal to become a one person and they'll be two separate bargaining units they're both they'll why does he want to be a separate one person so, so it, it makes a lot of good sense because for all intents and purposes as a supervisor he mm -hmm. may wind up responsible for disciplining somebody within the union on behalf of the town okay. yep. so in order to avoid his negotiations from being a conflict of interest mm -hmm. um, it's better for him to to negotiate as a single person okay. unit yeah. so that also also means if we have a particular hang-up like we did last year over one of the sergeant's desirements then we can still finalize the officer contract while we're working out something with his okay. right. so there's a lot of benefit actually to both both parties okay. to allowing him to split out right. yep so, so you, your motion my motion is my to second. accept his proposal okay. yep second All in favor aye. Aye. aye do you want me to draft a letter yeah would you please Okay, so I guess that's it. I, got, I, have, I one have one more. more. Okay. So on Facebook, you had a bunch of, uh, and Karen, thank you for helping and assisting on the listing of the different volunteer positions that are open within the town. Um, and this is, I mean, if you just look at that list, um, we're looking at the uh, 2020 census, and when we get to the 2020 census, the, my guess is that we'll pass the 3,600 resident uh, which puts us in a new category mm -hmm. as far as positions within the town, volunteer positions within the town, where an individual can only hold one position. The likelihood of that happening and falling out is going to happen, and we don't have enough volunteers as it is, so we're going to have to think about strategies as to what to do. So, enough said. Yeah, because it's not just committees, it's stuff like our EMTs and firefighters and like having the town clerk be in the board of health and the the whole nine yards so you no uh, no we had i had talked at um when we went down to the mma conference and i was told by the manager of kp that an elected person can hold as many positions as they want remember she you were right <laughs> there oh, lauren goldberg, lauren goldberg oh, told an elected us position told can have you, yes. i'd like to get that in writing yeah. Can we oh, well, uh, request of Lauren? Yeah. I mean, I'll send her. That's because I asked her. That's what she said. But well, then, the, then the question would be for the appointed position. So that would still be. So the question would be for appointed, appointed positions also. Okay, yeah. I'll reach out to yeah. KP. So I now, guess. 
Well, and probably we should talk viruses and okay. any plans that we have with respect to, I mean, nothing's coming mm. to the West so far. So, I mean, do we do business as usual? The governor filed for a state of emergency today. So he's asking people not to meet and other things. So for at least for tonight, it, well, we won't be meeting for 14 days, so no. it's probably so okay. It be okay then. <laughs> but we should think about in 14 days okay, if we need to do days. something. Yeah, we will. And with that, I'd offer a motion to adjourn. I, I'll offer that motion too at 6:54. Um, second. What, oh, what, did you have something else here? It was about the virus. I was going to tell you that there was an email stating that if there's 50 or more, a group of 50 or more, we have to contact the state if we expect a group of 50 or more so that they can report it to them. Okay. 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 So right now we're not over that limit no. yet. <laughs> no, but like the school is having their um, their corn beef yes. cabbage dinner, there'll probably be 50 people there. So Ooh. That's the same. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, we, we had, yeah. yeah, we had a church function Sunday, uh, Saturday and they've canceled that. <laughs> Over yeah. in Wilbraham. They're not saying cancel. They're just saying they want to know. And yes. I guess they well, well, and yeah. they'll make and they'll like make the ruling. So maybe you yeah. should, if they had a number, maybe you should probably get in touch with Kathleen. Okay. All right. So we'll make our motion to adjourn at six six fifty five p.m. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye.